Hello, I'm Stan Smith from OSU Extension in Fairfield County. As we progress with our pesticide recertifications today, we're going to deviate a little bit from what we've historically done and take a little bit of a look at some fertilization issues, more specifically hazardous algae blooms. About six months ago, the governor asked the director of agriculture to convene a working group to take a look at what's going on that's causing so many hazardous algae blooms in recent years. And of course, you've all heard about Grand Lake St. Mary's and also the issues up on Lake Erie. That report was given to the governor on February 1st, and what it included in that report was that we're seeing a lot of dissolved reactive phosphorus as the primary cause of these hazardous algae blooms. Now we're all familiar with filamentation algae or moss pond scum that we see in all of our farm ponds. These are not hazardous algae blooms. What we're looking at when we talk about hazardous algae blooms is something that's composed of cyanobacteria which can and has in some cases caused health threats to not only Ohio's residents but some of their pets as they've gone into those waters. Got a few pictures here of what we're seeing. This is from back in July up on Lake Erie. It progressed to this in August. A picture from October of the lake. And this one is of Grand Lake St. Mary's. Not a pretty sight and also creating some health concerns. Basically, as we look at the cause of hazardous algae blooms, what we continue to come back to is phosphorus causing a problem and it's the dissolved reactive form of phosphorus. It's really not critical that we get into a lot of detail about the chemistry of why that is the issue but more importantly figure out why there's so much phosphorus available to even be getting into those lakes. Certainly the working group as they assembled the governor's report has strongly considered new regulation. Those might include perhaps record keeping, maybe licensing much like pesticide licensing. Could involve restrictions on tiling since tile is one of the sources of getting that phosphorus to those waters. Perhaps they're going to look at tillage or the necessity to incorporate phosphorus and applications of fertilizer on frozen ground much like we've been looking at manure applications on frozen ground in recent years. The bottom line is we need to look at whether we really need all the phosphorus that we're using. They could go so far as to only allow phosphorus applications if the soil test requires it. Most believe that regulation is not only a possibility but it's, it's more than likely we've got to find ways to keep phosphorus out of the water. As we do that, let's take a couple of minutes and look at what we're seeing locally and quite frankly I would suspect in most Ohio counties as we look at soil tests. We know from the Tri-State Fertility Bulletin that our goal for a minimum critical level of phosphorus is either 15 parts per million or 30 pounds per acre depending on how your soil test is reported to you for corn and soybeans those minimum levels are a little bit higher for wheat and alfalfa as we look at the maximum that we need we find again from that publication that once we get to 30 parts per million for corn or 60 pounds per acre for corn we've got more than adequate fertility as we look further at that publication, we see that any time we get to 80 pounds per acre or 40 parts per million, we're needing to be thinking real seriously about drawing those levels down for a variety of reasons that we'll talk to about here in just a minute. We know from research previously and, and for years that a bushel of corn only removes 37 hundredths of a pound of P2O5. Basically that is the form of fertilizer that we put on when we apply 18460, 1034O and some of those phosphorus containing products. So if we're raising 180 bushels of corn we're removing 65 pounds of that fertilizer form. 
if we're raising 50 bushels of soybeans and taking them off the farm we're removing 40 pounds of P2O5 so if we looked at a situation where we were going to fertilize for two years of crops in a corn soybean rotation we'd only be removing 105 pounds of P2O5 less than 250 pounds of 1846-0 for a two-year requirement back to what we said earlier the tri-state fertilizer publication says that the minimum critical level is 30 pounds per acre or 15 parts per million we know that it takes 10 pounds of P2O5 to raise that soil test reading one pound or 20 pounds to raise it one part per million when we look at phosphorus costing 50 cents or more per pound we need to be thinking about whether we really want to spend the money to apply beyond our means so it's not only an environmental issue but as we apply phosphorus beyond what's needed we get into a situation where we're perhaps spending more money than we need to let's take a peek at the soil tests in Fairfield County and see what they're averaging 155 tests over the last couple of years the average phosphorus level in our soils here is 98 pounds per acre critical minimum level is 30 once we get beyond 60 we've got more than enough we get to 80 and the tri-state guide tells us to begin to draw it down just to see where we've come from I look back at our soil tests in 1990 and we summarized over 400 of them then and we saw that we had 88 pounds per acre as our average reading on agricultural fields not significantly different in the last 20 some odd years but continuing to keep more phosphorus in our soils than what's needed more importantly as we look at where we got that average number of 98 pounds I think it's interesting to note that 45 of the 155 nearly 30 percent had a reading of over 100 19 of them had a reading of over 200 at 200 if we raise 250 bushels of corn per year for 18 years we're still not going to be drawn below the critical minimum levels that we see in that tri-state publication and you can look on down that slide and see that we've got three samples that came back in the county that we're storing over 500 pounds per acre as a soil test reading in the soil here's an example of perhaps where some of that extra phosphorus is coming from these are actual soil tests from a local farm and pay special attention to field number seven as we look at an aerial map of that farm where is field seven located it's right beside the barn it's an old livestock farm had brood cows on it for many many years and as I think you can probably imagine most of the manure got spread right next to the most convenient field so as we look at that string of tests again field number seven is quite frankly to a place where it could be drawn down the rest of those soil tests are right where they need to be or right where the tri-state fertilizer guide tells us they should be where else are we finding excess amounts of P and I think this is particularly interesting it's not just happening in agriculture as I looked at the average soil test reading from our lawn and garden soil test from the county the past two years we see that the average number there is 275 pounds per acre that's more than a ton per acre of extra phosphorus as you look on down there 25 of the 90 samples were 400 plus and four were over a thousand so we're seeing the same types of excess and perhaps even beyond as we look at what the homeowners using as they fertilize their lawns their garden and their flower beds not only is it expensive but we become concerned about the environmental aspects of it as hazardous algae blooms continue to be in the news more and more 
basically as we look at phosphorus and its application beyond those critical minimum levels that we talked about a few minutes ago we need to recognize it costs money that we simply don't need to be spending it threatens the health of Ohio's waters and residents and if we continue to see hazardous algae blooms or water issues that are related and tied back to phosphorus in both agriculture and, and presumably horticulture environments, we're certainly going to begin to see more regulation and restrictions. So at the end of the day, it's important that we not only soil test, but use that soil test to your advantage to not only economize in many cases on the amount of fertilizer we're using, but also preserve our environment as we look at issues with hazardous algae blooms in the waters of Ohio.